This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. If you only had one car for the rest of your life, you'd take really good care of it. Well, we only have one brain in life. Visit BetterHelp.com allies and take care of one of the most important parts of you, your mind. Hello, welcome to the Easy Allies Podcast. I'm Daniel Bloodworth, coming to you from Los Angeles, California. This week I'm joined by Brad Ellis. Hello. Michael Huber. Yo. And in the control room, we got a full house. We got Isla Hink. Hey. Don Casanova. He's over there. And uh, Gabby Montoot. She's sitting on the other side of the couch. Yeah. You can see her arm there. <laughs> Sick arm. Whack Dude, my glasses. Sick arm. Super tight. Reaction to that. Super tight on. <laughs> uh, friends, uh, we're here to talk about whatever happened in, in video game news this week. Uh, it's crazy town right now. Uh, going through lots of emails, lots of games coming in, previews, reviews. More people are like, hey, you want to check this thing out? We got a closed beta happening this week. And I was like, really? Um, <laughs> nobody Tidal left. Wave. Sorry. Tidal wave, man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is also one of those weeks that uh, it's a little more spread out. Mm-hmm. We'll probably talk about the big topics a little bit less than usual and the small topics a little bit more than usual. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a new MetaQuest headset coming out. We've got some new info on Starfield, some new info on Witchfire, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of other things going on. But before we get started, we need to choose a workout, buddy. Mm. Nice. Listeners. If you're not aware, we are currently in the process of training our custom character, Don Romantica, that, that Don Romantica, like, put all the words there in my mouth at the same time, uh, that's D-A-W-N, uh, like the sunrise. Each week, patrons submit characters for Dawn to work out with to raise her stats, and we're going to choose the right one. Uh, last week, Huber was absent, but Dawn was ambushed. She fought against these Koopa Brothers ninjas, and she got taken out by a Tomberry. It's intense. Don't mess with the Tomberries. Anyways. Stab you in the gut. Yeah, she's recovered now. She's ready to get back to the gym. There's one wrinkle. This week, it's the last week you get to choose a partner who's going to give you a new stat. Oh. After this, you're going to be working on that build, figuring out which, which things to increase. Got it. Uh, so as a reminder, her current stats are plus one strength, plus three swordsmanship, plus three flexibility, plus two stealth, plus one defense, minus one speech, and plus one shape shifting. Shape shifting. <laughs> Here are this week's potential candidates. From Wild of Days, the merchant from Resident Evil 4. Hmm. The workout will be joining the merchant for a tour of the castle, where he'll teach you the tricks of his trade. The merchant will teach you how to get around quickly through a hostile environment without really being detected. Speed and stealth, maybe, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, Catchphrase, you know it. What are you buying? buying? From Cody Spencer, Commander Shepard. Nice. Dawn and Shepard are going to jog around the Normandy, and they're going to spend hours talking with crewmates uh, and Shepard is going to teach Don how to choose good dialogue options mm. and even speech. romance members of the crew. Catchphrase. <laughs> finish, uh, finish the fight. Finish the fight. Oh, I love Master And then uh, from Dustin Halo? McNabb, who I believe was responsible for that Tom Berry last week, uh, Deckard Kane. <laughs> ah. You're going to stick around and listen to Deckard, gaining knowledge about items and how to not get possessed by Diablo. Catchphrase. Uh, Dawn. It has begun. It's be- it has uh, begun. So yeah, we, lore stat or something? We're going with Merchant, Commander Shepard, or Deckard Kane. All right. Let me sell you on the Merchant. Mm-hmm. That's Our character is seeming to naturally lean into a stealth yeah. build Definitely. with Dex. Definitely. Seems like that's going to be our main strength. We want to mid-max his character, which we should do. I agree. Because we got taken by that Tomberry. We need to get revenge on that Tomberry. I agree. So I'm going with the merchant because I want to 
boost those stats. We don't need to talk to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> lone wolf. We're a killing machine now. Yeah, Dawn Romantic Punished. is a lone wolf. Ready for the stealth. If if they get caught, get out that sword. Yep. That's it. That's right. We need no allies. Any thoughts to counter this? I would I would have gone fa- like Shep uh, if the catchphrase was "This is my favorite store in the Citadel." <laughs> this is my favorite store in the Citadel. But alas, it wasn't. <laughs> so I gotta go merchant as well. Okay, that stat. Like I said, we were going for a new stat. Plus one navigation. Still good. Whoa. Still really good. Yeah, still good. Okay. That's what, an unusual what, what stat, What stats blood. did we miss out on? Are we allowed to know? Sure. Uh, we would have gotten a plus one to charisma, which I would have converted into a plus two speech if we went shepherd. Uh, loose. Or, yeah, uh, creative liberties. Yeah. Yeah. Plus one he wisdom. Bends it to his will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this week is yeah. about getting new stats, but I'll convert that stat to an old stat. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You're a maniac, Bloodworth. Mm-hmm. It's your last chance to get a new stat. Oh, okay. Uh, and it really, speech would have been a new stat. <laughs> you were getting a, a minus on that. Positive we don't need to talk, need to, talk yeah. to anyone. <laughs> Blood's nope. going to make us. You don't know that now, yet. We you have do not know. It. Makes me want to play Mass Effect. You know the patrons are going to just stack everything with dialogue choices. <laughs> yeah. Need just kill Andromeda. Andromeda. Mm. They're yeah. one. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated today. Uh, become a patron for $5 or more to submit to Workout Buddies. Uh, and watch for the Love and Respect post that goes up either Monday or Tuesday every week. Don's going to take a nap. And now we must answer for the mistakes we made in last week's episode. <sighs> Isla, begin corrections music, please. Boop. The six-year window for that new Witcher trilogy begins with the re- release of the first game. So when that one comes so out. So that would mean three-year gaps between games, not two-year gaps. Okay. Wait, they're re So, did the they just game. word that poorly before? No, I mean, we kind of, like, said within a six-year period, but they're talking about the six-year period started with the first game. Oh, okay. So, if you did the three oh, the, years, the game two, the three years, trilogy. game three, yeah. I will still be skeptical about that on their track record for time oh, yeah. of games. Yeah, it's so. still pretty aggressive. Yes. <laughs> but, okay. yeah, this is the new trilogy. Clarification. Got, yeah, it. Yeah, got, it. got it. There's a whole lot of games he announced. Last yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that, yeah. Um, I just didn't know if they were like doing the first one again. Mm-hmm. Makers. Uh, some supplement, uh, some supplemental info uh, on Criterion. We're talking about Need mm-hmm. for Speed Unbound last mm-hmm. week, and I, mm-hmm. you know, and like a lot of the stuff I kind of knew, but it's like hard to like condense it and like bring it back in your head. Uh, and I, I can, and I, I kind of like shorten this up too. But basically, today's Criterion has about twenty percent of the staff that were around back during the previous Need for Speed Burnout days. Um, and they merged, this is the part that I completely forgot, uh, they merged with Codemasters Cheshire, who used to be Evolution Studios. Oh. So those are the guys that did, uh, Drive Club, that did Motor Storm, oh. that did Dirt 5, Motor that did Onrush. Yeah, now, Club obviously, a lot of people have left from there as well, you know, or, or been laid off or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they're saying less than 50% of that staff remains from the Sony days. But anyways... The evolution team in there makes me more excited. Mm. Nice, yeah. <laughs> for this Need for Speed game. Sick. Yeah. Really love on Rush. Um, we said that Valkyrie Profile Lenneth was not a remake of the original game, uh, but even though it is a port from the PSP version, that game itself is, is an enhanced remake. remake of. An enhanced remake? Okay. Yeah, of the, it's also the original the PS1 situation. game. Yeah, basically. Oh, it's more like that. Okay. Um, Brad, when we were talking about rumors of the Horizon Zero Dawn remake, Mm -hmm. you mentioned Days Gone. Mm -hmm. However, Days Gone also does not have a native PS5 version. Are you sure? Yeah, it's just a patch that runs the PS4 version at like 60 frames per second. I gotta look this up. (laughs) I could have sworn there's a native patch or version of that game. Continue. Uh, And then Pentiment takes place in 16th century Germany. That's not in Eastern Europe. Nor is it technically during the Middle Ages, which essentially end uh, in the late 15th century. Yes. They know what we meant, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like you're trying to give people, like, yes. a framework of uh, the the kind of civilization we're looking at. That's, that's all we were trying to do. Uh, if you have a correction, leave it in the YouTube comments on either the public version of this podcast or the patron version. Uh, use the word correct. Cor- My mouth is not working. Use the word correction. 
Uh, and leave a timestamp so I know what you're talking about. In Corrections Music. Boop. All right. So a couple weeks back, we were talking about NVIDIA with these giant, yes. expensive graphics cards. Behemoths. Uh, and not too long before that, we talked about Meta raising the price on the Quest 2. Mm-hmm. Now we've got the Meta Quest Pro. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. We had to talk Isla off a ledge. $1,500. Wow. For the Meta Quest Pro. Goodness. Uh, it's coming out October 25th, just a couple weeks from now. Wow. That's really soon. How, really much, how much storage do you think? Comes how much in this? Five hundred gigs. Fifteen hundred dollar product. Two hundred fifty gigs. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say it's. Gonna it's be only two hundred fifty six gigabytes of storage. Wow, that's nuts to me. That is. Does it have a micro SD slot or something? Like, I don't know, but I mean, I guess I've never had to delete anything from my Quest Two, so. Because you play two games on it. <laughs> right. Yeah, because there are only two worthwhile games. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> on I, uh, three, three, three. That was just surprising to me that they would have that little memory. But yeah, a lot of it is about weight. The lenses are forty percent lighter. It's got higher risk screens. Got facial and eye tracking, um, so that it can reflect your your facial expressions to other people in VR. It has new self tracking controllers, which you can buy separately right. to use with the Quest Two for three hundred dollars. Which yeah. honestly, like is kind of appealing to me. Mm-hmm. Like, as a Quest 2 person, those controllers aren't great. The tracking isn't great. Beat Saber, like, you'll lose some stuff on the edges mm. and stuff like that. So, 300 is a lot. But, I mean, if they're bulletproof, you know, it's cheaper than 1500 yep. And it's cheaper than buying an Index, which is 800 or whatever. Right. You know? It's just barely. It's like $200 <laughs> cheaper than having bought an Index. Um, then we get to the, sort of the weird part. The kind of intent for this device, the thing that they're emphasizing, is using it for work. Uh, yeah. yeah. To be in meetings. Cool. <laughs> in virtual conferences. I rooms. cannot wait blood until, like, <laughs> nations are having, like, negotiations in this. <laughs> right. I want to be, like... Like Mean Girls or whatever, and go to go to Microsoft or go to Meta and just be like, "Stop trying to make Meta Metaverse happen. It's not going to happen. Right. It's not happen. That was another part of of this uh, keynote that they they showed that the uh, you know after after much derision that their avatars will now have legs. Wow! <laughs> wow! Super I actually, cool. I was forced to make one. I guess you don't really have to make one, but oh, like yeah. the quest like bugs you when you start it up. Oh, it's with like, the new your, meta accounts? Yeah, yeah. Make your meta account or whatever. And I was like, okay, God. And you have to like leave the leave the headset like three times and go to a website and go, it's like logging into like Netflix or something on a on a TV where you're like mm. go to act meta.com slash activate or whatever. You have to do that like three separate times. It was so irritating. But I made a little avatar. She looks great. I want to see. I'll sh- I'll show you my avatar. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So they have a partnership with Microsoft to bring Teams in Office and Windows mm-hmm. all to VR. Interesting. So you know you can bring up your spreadsheets. Are we right. talking in this episode of the Easy Allies podcast about how Facebook had to like force their their own employees to use? Yeah, that was another thing that Discover came out. Discover or whatever the hell it there Horizons, is. Like, whatever the hell it's there, called. There's a leak of like a bunch of uh, memos and stuff basically <laughs> saying we're going to have managers start holding people accountable <laughs> to spend a certain amount of time in Horizon Worlds every wow. week. Cool. Wow. Like, I, we were talking about this before. Like, Brad and I were talking about this before the podcast where it's like, these people are making millions of dollars a year and they just make the wrong decisions, the dumb decision. It's like, if your own company is not using this and is being forced to use this, why don't you read that as writing right. on the wall of no one wants this? Instead, you say, you all have to use this to prove to people that it that they want it? It's like, right. no, dude. And uh, I don't remember the details, but you know John Carmack, right? Mm-hmm. You know, formerly mm-hmm. from it and all that. Yeah. Of course. And he's part-time there because he was like brought in you know when they got oculus yeah 
and apparently there's, there's some leaks about him criticizing, <laughs> you know, and people that aren't listening to Carmack. And if you're not listening to Carmack, yeah, what are you yeah, doing? You're insane. Um, totally. <laughs> um, another part of that Microsoft deal is they've got a uh, Game Pass mm-hmm. in there, but it's just gonna be a screen. It's it's gonna be a big old yeah. screen. It's gonna be like PlayStation Home. Yep. Where you're just like looking at the screen and yeah. streaming games. That's what uh, you yeah. can, like playing on PSVR was like that. If you're yeah, playing you can do that with game. games. Yeah. yeah. PSVR. I played Dark Souls three laying down. It was weird. <laughs> But I like, just did it to do it. Yeah, like looking straight up at the s- yeah. Like ceiling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how uh, I would play Virtual Boy. I'm not mean, laying down, but like laying blood, like on my stomach. Because I would just like. Yeah, yeah things terrible. That's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Stomach. Yeah, so I would like lay it on the bed and then lay on top of it because it just had like this tiny little stand. Like getting a massage. Like. It wasn't made to be like a headset at all. But was it on the bed or was it? Yeah. Well, I'm having trouble picturing this. I'm picturing a massage table. Yeah. I know what you're saying. But he doesn't have a, he- a hole for the machine or his head. So your head is just like, your neck is just bent back at a crazy angle? A little bit. Because I mean, like you're <laughs> propping yourself on your arms anyways for the controller. Okay. You're propping yourself mm. on your well, arms. Yeah. There was no good options to play that thing. Right. They were standing all uncomfortable. Up, standing up at the Blockbuster uh, checkout line. It's the best yeah. Or you'd have to get like, you know. Like some apple boxes to yeah, put yeah, the stand on because you need to mount it on like the it wall. only stands like that high. Yeah, so you'd have to, you know, it died for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> it died very quickly for a yes. reason. Well, the price of this uh, Meta man, it uh, it has the vibe of like it, it without without diving into the specs and getting my hands on it. The price oh. says to me that it's important. That it is the premier option. Do you think right. that's what they were going for when they charged this much? Like comparing it to the index, right. comparing it to the other VR machines. It's like, yo, this one is this expensive. It's the best. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's that is honestly that's something I do think is you know a big part of this is like you know you have your Xbox Elite controller, right? Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and you have this thing like it is a standalone device, right? So mm-hmm. you you're you're not using a PC at all. So yeah. it's got to do all the heavy lifting in terms of processing and everything like that. Uh, not only the games themselves, but including, you know, all the, the tracking and everything and being lighter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, yeah, they still have the Quest 2. They said, the Quest 2 is not going away. This isn't going to replace anything, but this is the the premium option. Got it. They're going to try to sell this to, like, companies and stuff, this model. That too, This yeah. is the premier model for that. Yeah, the, like, remote Some working. dumb manager think this will build synergy with the team. <laughs> buy, like, <laughs> ten of them. And they'll do one meeting and no one will be able to figure it out. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. use this. Yeah. Yeah, could you imagine, like, somebody's just, like, looking the wrong yeah. way? Like, where is everybody? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah. like, Zoom works fine. Right. The hell. It's fine. Like, Zoom well, I mean, is fine. Zoom, Zoom alone <laughs> is is kind of a huge pain in the yeah, butt, right? That alone. Because you're sitting there locked to a camera, and it's just like, eventually you're gonna tell you, some, you get like, so much more fatigue than even being in a real meeting. Yeah. You're going to tell like, some the... 50-year-old accountant to strap that on his head. Yeah. Right. Just talk to me on Zoom. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of this, though, is like you could be out walking the AR, and it'll keep you from hitting a tree or something. You know, Be like in a meeting. Look like a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> walking down the street. Fucking Robocop walking yeah. around yeah. with that thing yeah. on the end. Yeah. If I saw someone walking down with this, I would I'd yeah. go the other way. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like, what, what is people will get like like punched just for wearing Google Glass, right? I don't know. There don't was all know. kinds of craziness that was going Probably. on people when they tried to do that. Yeah, yeah. Geez. Um, Some other things <laughs> that they talked yeah. about in there. Uh, they bought a bunch of studios. Yes, they um, did. Camouflage, the studio that made Iron Man VR, mm-hmm. which was pretty well received pretty good, yeah. on PlayStation. Jones liked it. Uh, that's coming to Quest in yep. November. Um, they bought uh, Twisted Pixel, uh, which I know the name, but I don't remember what else they've worked on. And then Armature Studio, who did uh, Resident Evil 4 VR. Yeah, that's probably one of the best-selling games yeah. on Quest, so I guess good idea. Yeah, it's a good pickup. Yeah. But, yeah. And then uh, we'll show this teaser here. Um, for viewers, uh, but Skydance Interactive, uh, the team behind The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, uh, has teased a new project titled Behemoth, Ooh. Uh, which is coming in late 2023. And 
we don't know much about it yet. Like, this teaser is just like, you just kind of see the snowy environment. I love Brutal New World. And then a great big mm-hmm. hand Boy, coming geez. out of the ground. So immediately my mind is thinking yeah. just a massive scale. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, huge, like visuals. Yeah, just thing. huge things. Like, you know, walking into a mountainside town or something, and it just, yeah, that getting that scale. Yep. yep. But... Cool, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's not much we can say about it. Mm-hmm. The hand looked cool at the end, I guess. The mm-hmm. rock hand. That's my favorite thing in VR is like... Scale. Size and scale of yeah, things. Yeah, it's one of the yeah. best things about it. Like I just remember like Resident Evil 7, like the part when you're just like on the boat mm-hmm. and coming along and you see like a huge like wall. Mm-hmm. Looks cool. Uh, what do you think, you know, in terms of this setup versus we're still waiting to hear price on PSVR, PSVR? 2? Yeah. I mean, obviously PSVR is way more appealing to me because of the games that I assume are going to be coming for it. And with that, we've seen, like, $1,500, dude? Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. VR has got to be cheaper than a PS5, so it's got to be, like, three to 400 tops, I feel like. Right. But that's... Oh, sure. I think PSVR could be... 500? 500, could anything? Be. Could be, I think, on the high, yeah. high end. Yeah, five would be, I think, the, the high, high end. It does end. have a lot of those advanced features it with does, tracking and stuff. It yep. does, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah, this dollars. like auto adjusts the eyes, uh, like distance between or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Hmm. That kind of stuff is really good, and it reduces eye strain and things. Yeah, I guess like if you're a super VR enthusiast, I guess this could be appealing to you. Like I'm not personally, right? But I'm sure it's probably pretty cool when you're using it. I mean, it better be cool. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing is that's sort of weird about this. And, and going back to the Nvidia thing is, is like now that it feels like we had all of those shortages and we saw all the scalpers, mm-hmm. it feels like companies are just like, let's just get our whales. Yeah, let's just make something yeah. that's really cool and expensive and unaffordable, yeah. rather yeah. than like going for the mass market side of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It even feels like that with the new Magic: The Gathering thing. They put out like a thousand dollar collectors pack that's mm. like four boosters of old (laughs) like basically proxies of like legendary cards but like everyone's just like what who's this for Mm -hmm. there's whales it's crazy Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i guess with quest 2 i think a lot of people just bought it too because it was fairly reasonable price when it came out and it's wireless obviously but it's like man this is so much more it is so much money yeah like i don't know if you're gonna get anyone new necessarily to come into this and get this, yeah. It's, I think new people are just gonna get users. the quest. Yeah, it's just yeah, super enthusiast, like you said. Yeah. But never know. Mm-hmm. Which I guess, like, I guess is a smart model to have like a couple of different like skews or whatever. Yeah, like get your mid level. I'd say three hundred is not entry level, but like the quest two is like more affordable, and then this is like for the power users or people who can justify the cost for work. I have friends who do art um, or, like, uh, high-end, like, furniture making, they spec their stuff out in VR. And so, like, they use this kind of stuff. And, like, if they could do it without a computer, do it with a quality, like, good AR, you know, this would probably be invaluable to them. Yeah. So who's to say? And I don't know whether it's really been used this way or not, but one of the things I had always thought was, Probably a good, you know, again, work commercial use or whatever would be something like real estate. You know, like mm-hmm. if you can actually like scan a room with like accurate 3D space and somebody can just like walk around a bunch of apartments in a, re- you know, retail office rather than going all mm-hmm. across town. Sure. Then, you know. But it's like you can do that already. Right. On VR. I don't right. know if this is going to like maybe it'll look better. I mean, it better look better, but I don't know how much better... If it justify the cost, mm-hmm. I mean, it seems it seems way too much for me, in my opinion, right now. Yeah. But who knows? Yeah. Especially in our economy yeah. right now. And, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and like growing up, you know, we used to get like price drops for things, <laughs> and I feel like that just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Like you know, oh, it'll be fifteen hundred for like six months, and then it'll go down to like eleven or twelve or a thousand or whatever, and it's like, no, this is probably gonna be fifteen hundred dollars for like two years. Yeah, I mean it's Sorry. funny. It, it sounds like I'm be- defending this thing, and I do think it's I do think it's expensive. But I'm looking at the index right now. To, I was trying to see if they they have a val- index two coming, you know, which is rumored, but whatever. 
Uh, the, v- the Valve Index VR kit is $1,000, comes with the headset, two controllers, and the base stations. Requires a PC. Right. Yeah. A good, it does require those base stations, too. And it too, requires yeah. the base stations, which two come with it. You can do more, but like... A good PC for running v- VR, you know, that's another grand probably, another 1200 mm, bucks maybe. That's a good point. Yeah. So it's like there are there are people probably who want to do VR yeah. and don't want to build a big badass desktop, you know? Yeah. And yeah, this like is cheaper on, on the whole than that. Like Yeah, yeah it is. Big PC and, and a Valve, that's two $3,000, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's starting to make a little more sense yeah. to me. Yeah, and sticker and shock for Half-Life sure. Half Life never went to Oculus, right? Um, I don't. I, don't I know. mean, if you have maybe. Yeah. Yes and no. If you have a link cable, right? You can do, like I can play Steam games on my Quest Two. Mm. I was doing it the other day. It's not like bulletproof and perfect, but it's right. whatever you can. So it didn't, but it did. Right. I guess that's what I meant. Is it not Oculus as as a whole? You but can't just buy c- Alex in the store. Right. Right. It's not on Quest. the Quest Two. You have to have it on PC. Correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Got it. Anyways. Yeah. But, we'll, we'll see. Blood. We'll see how it shakes out, especially when more VR things come out. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, it will you know get some of that technology more refined. Maybe that's yes. the angle that it like. Then down the road, the cheaper headsets can have yeah. more of this kind of thing. I just feel like everything's getting pricey. I mean, it it really is, and like the <laughs> the price uh, scarcity of chips and stuff. Like, the reason I thought of this is I I could see my I'm logged into my YouTube for playing the videos, and there's a drum machine that I was watching a video of that costs two thousand dollars that just does four drum voices, <laughs> you know. And it's I'm not gonna buy it obviously, but it's just like that's two thousand yeah, dollars. It's insane. <laughs> so you know. Different people have different price points for stuff, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you nailed it with the scalpers. Just like, well, they're going to sell. Yeah. Like, they're going to sell out. So. Uh, we recently got an update on Starfield. Uh, I don't know if you guys got to check any of this out no. yet or not. Just no. some of the bullet points. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, you know, I know we've all been a little bit lukewarm on it. Um, but just because it seems so far away still. Yeah. Um, but it was originally going to come out this year. Yep. Yeah, you got was pushed, originally. Yeah. I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never not, believed not that to, for us. I thought not to be that guy. Because they dated it like a year and a half before this time. Yeah. I mean, I guess when they showed it, I was like, oh, this is why it's going to come out because it's not innovative or interesting at all. <laughs> uh, but they just did a, like a five minute Q&A with Todd Howard. Uh, which uh, they went over some of the dialogue and traversal stuff. Uh, they talked about uh, inspirations, like old school inspirations on mm-hmm. this, so like a PC game called Sundog. You play it? From like the early 80s? No. 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 Don't know. Heard Shit. It. Uh, tabletop RPG called Traveler. I don't know. Isla, you know Traveler? Shit. Uh, let me check. Hang on. <laughs> vaguely familiar. Deep cuts. Mm. Yeah. So pretty deep cuts. Uh, they talked about this question of hard sci-fi, Huber. Cool, like Expanse. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, I, I have seen the cover for Traveler, okay. but never, <laughs> ever played it. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, and even they said it was kind of a, like a trick, almost like a trick question, because it's like no matter what you answer, like somebody else is going to have a different expectation. Oh, yeah. But like hard sci-fi being that like, you know, you can justify all the stuff. Like it could be realistic in the future. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, and he okay. was talking about like all the reading and stuff. He was from like quantum physics and like how like traveling through space and like you're moving the space rather than using the ship and mm. all this stuff. Yeah, interstellar, interstellar, interstellar hard, hard sci-fi. sci-fi. Hard sci-fi <laughs> is generally yeah, like adheres to the rules of nature, I like see. science. Yeah, generally. Speaking. Annihilation. No. No. Um. Well, <laughs> edge case, but no. <laughs> So yeah, but maybe. Yeah, he says yeah. they're trying to keep it grounded, but uh, like it's still a video game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so course. they're talking about like running out of fuel in the middle of space is not fun. <laughs> sure. So they're I like, that. They, they, you know, they changed that up so that. Uh, Dude, I don't know. I love running out of gas and like <laughs> days gone and shit. They're in Elite Dangerous. There's a group. Uh, I think yeah. they're called the Fuel Rats. Correct that if it's wrong. But um, they they make like huge expeditions to go rescue other players who have run out of gas. Mm. Awesome. Who've run out of any fuel, like, way out there. They'll, like, come and save you. That's 
a very hardcore audience. It, yeah. It's dangerous. A very hardcore compared to the Bethesda <laughs> audience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they did plenty of testing and a lot of people that probably didn't enjoy so it. So hardcore. Yeah. I just I appreciate that that's yeah, the same thing that people do. Yeah. Same. Uh yeah, so he said now like what it is, it will just limit how far you can go at once. Um, I'm okay. not sure exactly what that means. Yes, it's hard. Probably um, max capacity of fuel. Your ship probably has a max yeah. capacity. So and you can probably takes, go there. You can probably upgrade. This planet, then you need to stop or something. Yeah. yeah. Jump distance. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I don't know if you'll recharge or whatever. He did open, like leave it open, though. I was like, yeah, people might might have a update down the road for it to be an option or for somebody might mod it in there. That, right. That kind of thing. But, the, yeah, not generally going to be part of the, the way the gameplay is set up. Mm-hmm. Um, he talked about the trait list, uh, and this reminded me a lot of um, like Outer Worlds and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's saying like each trait also has negatives. Um, yeah, but they don't want you to hate your character and then like start over and re-roll. So they're saying for all of those like negative traits, there'll be like additional like activities or side quests that you could go on oh. that would remove your negative traits. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So if you put in a little extra work, you can get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I always do like that in in CRPGs typically where you can like spec your character out and get bonus stats if you have like can't talk to sp- or like can't be around spiders or whatever as right. a trait, you know, like take a negative to get beefed in another area. I mm-hmm. like that. Same. Um and then uh with dialogue was kind of the last thing they talked about. Uh they talked about how many lines <laughs> Yeah, right? 250,000 lines of dialogue compared to 59,000 in Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Anyone knows? Anyone know how much Red Dead has? Red Dead Two. Oh, I, I bet there's check. a lot Great there. Question. But Skyrim probably not as much. Sterling dialogue. Um, because they're talking about um, all the different options, you know, like that's why there's mm-hmm. so much. Yeah. And they're showing the persuasion checks, and there were like four different options, but they required different numbers of points. I couldn't see like a pool of points. God, so I love I'd, speech checks. Yeah, it's so one of my favorite like things in video games. One needed plus one, mm-hmm. and then there's like a plus three, plus four, plus five. Um, but uh, again, talking like they're you know putting in the work to like make all of that feel like really right. natural parts of the conversation, no matter which way you pick. That's very very intense. All right, eat your, eat your heart out, Starfield. Disco Elysium, three hundred and fifty thousand lines of dialogue. Yeah, Red that's a talky game. Though. Yeah, that's all the game is. <laughs> and Red Dead uh, Two is a shit. Yeah, Red, 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 let me get there. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption Two, one thousand two hundred actors, five hundred thousand lines. Fuck yeah. Wow, that makes Voice sense. Wow, style. that makes sense. Rockstar. Yeah. Yep. Nice try, Todd. I do yeah. wonder how you. Nice try, Todd. You know, how do you Star's judge level? a line, though? Double know. space these things? Like, what, <laughs> like, what font are we using? Like, <laughs> they said voice Get out of here. Lies. That's a line. You can't, you can't yeah, voice yeah, a sentence. space. Yeah. Or can you? <laughs> Anything else you say about those, it? That was, those are kind of the quick hits there. Brad's sick of talking no, about No, no, no. You get to see no, some he's, of the, he's, he's not talking about there. the stuff I'm curious about, which is like the, like, the, game the shooting, the, like, all that kind of stuff. Like, I. All that is super important to this game, but I always have a problem with these games and the sense of actually like doing something in the world that's not talking to someone I think is not very good. Yeah. I think it should be like I'm expecting it to be much better now because it's been a long time. But when, I, when we saw that footage, I was like, I don't know about yeah. this yet. Still very Fallouty looking. Yes, shooting. Yeah, and I know that's agree. only a, a part of the game, but I so just hope it's better. Yeah, Brad, you're so right because it's like such a huge part. It's like what everyone always remembers. When they talk about, you know, what happened in Fallout and Skyrim and all that, they tell those stories of, like, conversations and yes. dialogues and, like, all this build up by talking to these people and then it culminating somehow, you know? So that stuff needs to be mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny, though, because it's like I feel like everyone has some hesitation with that stuff. Like, I like Vats, mm-hmm. you know, but it's mm-hmm. like I'll still ab- admit to, like, just, like, Shooting without it is is a little is a little weird. For, yeah, for sure. And I'm not a big fan of like Skyrim's combat either. You know, same. Um, I liked Fallout 4's combat because like my expectations were lower. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm not a huge Fallout fan. I know yeah. 4 is not not everyone's favorite, but I think because my expectations were low, I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I, and you know, I'm I'm kind of a noob when it comes to Fallout, but it did feel better. Just that. Sure. So. Yeah, hopefully it'll be yeah. like I'm not expecting this to be doom or anything like that by no means, but I'm just like feeling a little better and not so like 
I don't want to. I don't want to play this and feel like I'm playing Fallout Four still. You know what I mean? Like yeah. shooting something, it feels the same. Like a little something more. Yeah. Well, then that's the thing, though. Is like they have access to those guys. Yeah, they have id. Yeah. Who are like some of the best in the biz. Yeah. So it's why why not? You know. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Like we'll even if it's even games, if there's still dude. some yeah. form of like you know dice roll or whatever going yeah, on behind the scenes. Yeah, I expect totally all that yeah. kind of stuff. But yeah, just hopefully it's a little. It feels a little better this time. Because like. I can't talk my way out of everything in these games. Right. Sometimes I fail a check and shit goes down. Gotta start blasting. I'm not going to reset if I fail a check. Like, I play how the dice rolls. Yeah. It's the way to do it. Yeah. Hopefully the story's cool. That's really all I care about. Yeah, yeah, yeah In a definitely. big space exploration game, like, my bar's pretty low. Like, if I'm having mm. fun and invested in the characters and, like, the mission like yo you got to get to this planet and like warn these people or something if you just if you have me engaged in that at all like sure i'll be happy yeah there just needs to be like an alcoholic for you yep, or yep. like a detective some valentine some detective guy looking for revenge there yep. you go he presents um, <laughs> some ragtag yeah. group of mercenaries or something on your ship like yeah that's it, it. space yep. games are so funny because it's such a moving target i feel like and and Blood, you said Todd kind of said this, but like everyone wants a space game that does everything for mm-hmm. some reason. Right. And I, and I think it's the wrong approach because then it'll always miss on some or all of the points. So it's like maybe the better focus would be to just like do your version of a space game and like the people, like Mass Effect is not Elite Dangerous, right? Right. Not, yeah. Oh, no. It's not trying yeah. to do that. Totally. And I think that's probably good. Yeah. I, I think you know? they're going to do... Because it's for different people. I think they'll do their version of whatever, you know? Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when they're talking about the, the dialogue and their, all yeah. this stuff and the traits, like, yeah, this is still very much an RPG. Yeah. This is very much about, you know, finding your quest line yeah. and you know, like, doing the stuff you want to do. I'm just going to be skeptic because mm-hmm. that gave me plenty of reasons to be, just like I'll be skeptic of CD Projekt's next game when it finally comes out. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, another game to to be skeptical about, um, but I, I, I'm curious after this blog, which fire? I'm not skeptical. Let's go. This yeah. is fun. Painkiller hype. <laughs> Painkiller hype. Bulletstorm hype. Huber, <laughs> were you aware that they were trying to target? Did you remember a, t- a 2022 no. early access target? No. <laughs> I don't know when any game is coming out unless it's a month away. Right. <laughs> That's or God well, I mean, this was. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, that's it. Um, but they, yeah. Wait, they, it was a month away? It was supposed to come out this month? Early access, yeah. Oh, early, early yeah, yeah. access. That's off my radar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, they pushed it back to 2023. To make it. Because they changed the design of the game. Pretty gnarly that change. Yeah, yeah. To make yeah. it open world, right? Yeah. Well, they, it's already sort of yeah. built this world. Yeah. But... You couldn't move around in it like an open world, right? Uh, and so they, they he kind of showed like screenshots of a bunch of different other because because I also wasn't really keenly aware that this was like roguelite, ro- you know, mm-hmm. type of progression. And so he was showing, you know, how a, as an example how Hades works, right? Like you you beat a room and then you can go through that door and get this reward, and you go through the other door and you get that reward. Yeah, and that's how Witchfire was essentially set up. Yeah. But what they did, because they wanted to have this kind of organic, big, open world, is basically the the witch would, like, trap you with, like, these barriers. And ah. so if you got close to the barrier, you would see it. But if you weren't right up against it, then so that you could see the world around you, like, it wasn't in the way. You know? Got it. So, but I you're think, st- as, as, as viewers might learn from an upcoming episode of Trash Babies, gamers don't tend to like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, so uh, they they mentioned like uh, games like Devil May Cry where they would put yeah. you know little, the red barrier the yeah. red barriers around the rooms and stuff like that. Totally. And they've been obviously working on this game for years. White we saw barriers? that game remember like years and years White. ago. We need a correction there. White barriers or red barriers in Devil May Cry? Oh, red barriers in Devil May Cry for okay. sure. Yeah, they showed those in the blog too. Cool. Um, and then like earlier this year. Adrian over there, the head of the astronauts, he's like, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. Like, I, I'm not liking the way this is going down. Bold move. And such a and move. And he like goes to the team and is like, we got to change this. Wow. And 
they were skeptical. Yeah. Yeah. And they started doing it, and it started feeling really hard. And then a couple months later, he's like, uh, maybe you were right. Hmm. But then they pushed back. The people that were skeptical. Yeah. Now push back and it's like, no, no, I think you're on to something. We're going to get there. Yeah, we're going to yeah. get there. Hell and so yeah. now they're saying they're like 95% the way there. Hell yeah. Wow. Yeah, because the bones look great. Mm-hmm. The bones of the game, you know, the the legacy of uh, them, you know, they were from uh, people can fly, right? And mm-hmm. they started their own thing. Yeah. So the 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 vision and fr- the gameplay of what I've seen, just a little little brief snippets, look really solid, so... Yeah, if they can make that work, that's even better. Like, big open world, I'm down. Yeah. Because, yeah, I guess the fear if would be... it makes be, sense, yeah, but they probably played it and were like, it, this needs to be, I guess. They probably yeah. felt trapped or players did and just, like, felt too linear or something like yeah. that. And you see all this, like, like uh, landscapes and all that. And I, I wish I could just move this kind of thing. And yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. I would love to see a documentary of this. Yes. Making of this yeah. game. Totally. Like a, yeah. Yeah. Because I think of uh, obviously Doom, like one of the greatest first version shooters of all time. Yep. Like the old ones and the new ones, and those are pretty linear, and that's like mm-hmm. a lot of what makes that combat so good because all those encounters are so tight, so focused. So changing it up to open world, like hopefully they can, if they just retain the mm-hmm. feeling of combat yeah. to be. Yeah, and it's yeah. still it's still roguelite, but it's yeah. just like the way all those things. And they said they had all these questions that they had to go through and answer. Like, okay, well, how is this going to work? What happens if you like, you know, kite these enemies and drag them over here? And like, yeah. we don't want people to just like pull a bunch of you know guys into like a tunnel and just be able to take them out one by one. Yeah, you know. So, you know, and they said that uh, there's still going to be some places uh, with enemies that are too hard to just like take on at first. You can't just run over there and like cool, yeah. knock them out. Um, and there's still going to be places where you might get trapped by the witch temporarily or whatever, uh, and well, some like locked doors. Uh, uh, but the quote, but the world is wide open wow. for you to explore in almost any order, and you can both push forward and retreat as you please. That's cool. So early access 2023 for release 2024. Yeah, probably. This is a ways yeah, probably away. Something like that. Probably. Yeah. Got it. So cool on I'm my hope. radar. Hopefully for you know comes around next Halloween. Or 2024 Halloween time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love that story about how the director was just like, eh, and then the team, when he started doubting it later, the team pushed back. Yeah. That's so cool. That I love is that excellent. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I respect it. We've got more news to come, uh, but if you have been enjoying the show so far, uh, please take a second to like and subscribe here on YouTube uh, and ring that notification bell. It helps us and it helps you stay connected. And now, a word from our sponsors. How does everyone seem to have a side hustle right now? With an all-in-one commerce platform like Shopify, it's time to start, run, and grow your own side hustle into a successful business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee, start, which I think is cheese or clarified butter? Start, butter, okay. Start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll create an online store in your vibe, discover new customers, and grow the following that keeps them coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted so your business keeps growing from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And thanks to 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content, Shopify's got you every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify. And you can too. Shopify makes selling simple, so you can put yourself and your ideas out there. Whether your thing is making ebooks or earrings, Shopify makes your success possible. Selling things online is hard. Uh, Don't try to do it alone. Don't try to manage a system by yourself. Don't do it. Use something like Shopify to help you do it. When you're ready to launch your thing into the spotlight, do it with Shopify, the commerce platform backing millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Go on, try Shopify for free, and start selling everywhere. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash allies, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash allies to start selling online today. Shopify, S-H-O-P-I-F-Y 
dot com slash allies. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Subscribe to HelloFresh and check save money off your fall to-do list. HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout and less expensive than grocery shopping too. I need to not order out meals so much and uh, HelloFresh has actually been helping my girlfriend and I do that because these meals are good and cheaper than (laughs) ordering in and it's a a really good savings because ordering out all the time is destroying my wallet. It's time to cozy up and save money by cooking at home. Fall is the perfect time to experience the delicious taste and unparalleled convenience of HelloFresh. You need a bunch of pans. Get a bunch of pans, order HelloFresh, and you're all set. Uh, I, again, my, my girlfriend got, uh, what, Ber- Bermundi? Bermundi. Bermundi. This is a fish, and she loved it. Love that fish. Huber loves it too. Well, HelloFresh will send it to you. We got Bermundi. I'd never even heard of it. Fancy stuff. It's really good. Uh, anyway, it's good. I don't know. It saves time. They're cool recipes. You learn things, too. I'm not a great cook, but with HelloFresh, you learn stuff. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Allies65 and use code Allies65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Uh, anyway, go to HelloFresh.com slash Allies65 and use code Allies65 for 65% off and free shipping. HelloFresh.com slash Allies65. Please do it. It's America's number one meal kit for a reason. And if you're a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. All right. Thank you. Have any of you, I know these guys now have, but they didn't before. Have any of you heard of Asteragos? This game looks sick. Curse of the Stars. This game looks so sick, blood. Uh, I'm gonna what play this trailer. What uh, first find. thing off, this is not a sponsored sec. Like last time I did this, like people were like, "What's with obviously sponsored sections?" Like yeah, this is what? not sponsored. What? I we never... wish we wish we could get paid for the spo- that those sponsor spots. Well, no, we specifically <laughs> tell people we don't do that. But no. <laughs> they, they, yeah, Rooster Teeth tries to get us to do game sponsorships every day, and yeah. I say no. Yeah. But the this game, I got an email saying this is out now, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, this exists. I've never heard of this before. Looks sick as shit. And like, yes, there's tons of games out there Too that many. we never hear about. Of course. But usually don't look this good. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look amazing. It doesn't look like, a, you know, necessarily Game of the Year material, but it looks It looks good. solid. It looks yeah, really solid. It looks fun. solid. It looks solid, like more fo- solid than some things you've reviewed. Yes. There's like four or five <laughs> reviews, and they're really good. It's like 80-something right now. It's meta. 84 on Metacritic yeah. out wow. of four reviews. Yep. Yep. So. Damn. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, for listeners, this thing looks kind of like a God of War light a little bit. A little bit of... Um, Ubisoft, what is it? Oh, Immortals. I was Immortals. thinking that too. Yep, yeah. Because yep. you do have some of the mythic things in there. Um, you've got, there's a werewolf in there. There's like this fire-breathing boar that's in there. Um, there is um, like a harpy. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's this fox woman who's a blacksmith. Harpies are risen. <laughs> Sorry. It's I... a minotaur. Yes. Yeah, so uh, there's God a minotaur. There's a big crocodile guy. There's this, uh, uh, they give away a mimic. You know what the mimics look like in the game, but just some Hades character. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it looks like Hades from God of War Three. Yep, yeah. right. It kind of has like Souls combat. It reminds me of. There's a lot of rolling. Yep. Yeah, a lot of dodge rolls. Yeah, um, lots of dodge rolls. That camera perspective and mm-hmm. all that. Yeah. But quite a bit of variety. Pretty, looks, yeah, pretty really strong cool. art style. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. At least in, as far as the trailer is concerned, it's, it's available pro- now on everything well. too. On everything, it's available. Yeah. Mind blowing, yeah. bud. Blood, the f- like, I'm mad at myself for never have he- hearing about this game. Because usually I, I, I try to find my emails, right? Yeah. You know, I like I, I get 80 emails every morning. Yes. I wake up, I've got like 80 emails, right? Yeah. Never got an email about this before. Wow. So maybe just Stealth. no marketing budget whatsoever. They pumped I, it all into the game, and we're like, "Yo, word of mouth, yeah. let's go." A tiny build is the ones publishing the ones that did Tinykin just a couple months ago. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because because I was thinking like I cannot believe this is just out and none of us had heard of it, and it just goes to show how many good games there are mm-hmm. at this very moment. Just so many people can't breathe because they're just catching up on they're all these shooting things. Shooting them out like a minigun. Yeah, yeah, just from from AAA all the way down. You know, I, I'm I'm I've gone on record and I will continue to say yeah. this is the best year for indie games of all time. No question about it. Looks okay. like it was announced in late 2021. Okay. Okay. So maybe we saw and just forgot about it. No, Or we no. just missed it. I don't think not, we did. Not many sites took it up. I've oh, just okay. seen it on, like, Gamatsu and, like, a few others. Yeah. But, like, I've, I've the name is fine. It doesn't yeah. roll off the tongue, and it's not, like... It's true. Like, it's yes. okay. It's got, an extra, it's got an extra syllable in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, get that I out of there. Asterigos. Yeah. Yeah. Asterigos. Asterigos. Yeah. There is another game where it's like, the, I forget what it's called, but it's like, it has a word in it that looks like nostalgia, but it, there's an extra A, so it's like nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just... It's wild to me that this is coming out, especially like we were saying, like right now, like just so many games so that we're getting many, hit with. Dude, where it's this, like the, the we have to like prioritize among AAA games right now because of how nuts it is. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah, la- the last hero of nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? Blood. Did they just spell nostalgia? Ro- <laughs> like, do they pronounce it nostalgia and they just spelled it? Wrong? I'm gonna play this before the year's over. I was say Asterigus, yeah. Take a note to remind me and Huber to play this. I won't forget. Of Asterigus. Okay. I got my running keep, list. Keep keep on me my, I put it on my list. Informed then. Remind yeah. me. You didn't yeah. watch Mandy, Huber. <laughs> I know. Well, because it I'm does so look right now. Asterigus does look decent. I don't know about a spell guy. I watched but. like two horror movies this year, and one of them was Hellraiser for you. Thanks, baby boy. It was a good movie. <laughs> it was. Check out Reaction Shots, our movie podcast, <laughs> here at uh, Easy Alex. Yes. Great plug. Wait, did you do it for work or for her? Both. She's what, watching kind of cheap She it. was like, it was one in the morning, and she's like, yo, you should watch Hellraiser I, uh, for work. In my defense. For work. In my defense. For the Reaction I Shots. I texted you at 11 p.m. saying, True. if you felt like watching a movie yeah. tonight, we're, I'm going to be talking about Hellraiser on the podcast tomorrow when we yeah. shoot it. And I watched it. No, I'll try to watch. You Mandy. chose to watch it at one a.m. I'll try to watch Mandy. <laughs> you don't. You don't have to. It's a good movie, though. I think you'd like it. In any case, Astero goes. That's basically what reaction shots is like. Just me and Huber arguing <laughs> for an hour and a half. Remember that name. Um, for for when the I'm everything. It. I'm not gonna forget this game. It looks too sick. The yeah. name. When everything peters out and you're you're you know. You've, you've wrapped up. Nothing's peter. Nothing's pe- no. petering out. <laughs> oh no! I get uh, December, Kingdoms of December Amalur like, vibes remember a little last, bit too. Like we had this huge chunk of October. Yeah. And then November is a little better. And then December is like was we got a lot right in that beginning with Callisto and all that. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, yeah, Blood. after that first week. Well, for the final podcast. For you. Yeah. For the final podcast of the year, Blood, we should make a note to have a uh, did Huber remember. <laughs> Asterigos <laughs> check. <laughs> and if he didn't, we got to have stakes on that. Hell yeah. No, this is my jam. That's my wheelhouse. I won't miss that one. Also this week, uh, we've got a lot of stuff I threw in here. Uh, just kind of, uh, we'll, we'll probably talk about these more than usual also this week, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, one of the like unbelievable things this weekend at TwitchCon. <laughs> yeah. S- streamer Adriana uh, Chech. Chechik uh, broke her back in a so-called foam pit, uh, which was just like oh. a couple of foam blocks yeah. on top of concrete. Uh, other contestants uh, got hurt as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, this is a thing that was meant for people to push each other off of platforms, American Gladiator style. Yeah, and it was it was there. Uh, apparently, Intel and Lenovo were running the booth, but you know, it was still part of TwitchCon. Yeah, yeah. Somebody should have been. Having a stunt coordinator, yeah, there it just wasn't thought out with safety checks. Yeah, it just wasn't thought out enough. Yeah, they, I mean, they gotta sue the hell out of Intel and Lenovo, gets sued. right? Yeah, there's gotta be a that that sued. thing has gotta be settled like in no time. Like yeah, breaking wow. a back, dude. Yeah, that is so. She's getting scary. a metal rod. She's getting a metal rod. Yeah. I saw yeah, the follow that's up. Terrifying. It's nuts. I hope she's all right. I mean, she's not. That's, I mean, that's like, the thing. She's I hope literally she will be not all right. all right. Yeah. You're going to have to deal with that the rest of your life. God. TwitchCon. Yeah, man. that's brutal. Just Good a Lord. freak out. No way is a waiver going to be enough to cover yeah. it. Damn. Yeah. 
careful with those boosts out there. Yeah. Serious. I don't mean, trust like, them. just like, don't do gimmicky booth stuff. Yeah, don't. It's like, do I mean, that. you could do gimmicky booth stuff. That's the thing. No, no, like I anyone mean, like, with any like, as a consumer, anyone that goes though, to a gym knows that this wasn't set up right. Like, it's right. just. But that's my thing. Is like, don't do a dangerous like fair carnival thing that is temporary. Yeah. Because mm. it's like gonna be shoddier, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a scaredy cat. Intel and Lenovo have the money. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they got the cash. No question. Yeah, it just wasn't thought out. Nope. Yeah. They should have had some and it's, foam on the floor. I mean, the thing to me... skipped that step. Is it just... It, it's sort of, you know... It almost feels like a metaphor of, like, Twitch's relationship with its creators. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow, blood, yep. It's just like, yeah, here you go. You know? Have fun. Good luck. Someone gets hurt. Oh, it's, you know, that wasn't our booth. Yeah. yeah. Not our fault. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, Like, totally. the Twitch... Like motto at this point. Damn. Um, and better news. Uh, after a string of promotional teases, L. Fanning was uh, revealed as uh, being the star of Hideo Kojima's next game. Mm-hmm. Huber, you're giggling over here. <laughs> These tweets, dude. <laughs> <laughs> These tweets, Kojima. I love it. It blows my mind, but I just love it. I was just, like some of his tweets, that just like, it's like what? The one where it was like, who is what? What is where? I was just like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And like, you know, in his brain, it all makes sense. <laughs> and it's just like, Does it? I think so. In his own, in his own mind. I mean, right. we know the man is a prophet at this point. Yes, yeah. it's like it's true. Four yeah. years, everything of these. Tweets were about will be just like yeah. the reality of California or something. <laughs> yeah. So does this mean Game Awards then? Oh yeah, for this game, I don't know. Or will he do it on his podcast? Uh, I don't think he'll do that on his podcast. I think he wants a bigger audience than just his podcast. Yeah, boost that podcast. <laughs> I'll boost it. Um, did you see the the like? I don't know if it was like a some kind of photo session or motion capture thing where she. Just oh, like, she was like doing kicks and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Um, but uh, movie guys, Isla and Huber. She's good. Elle Fanning's really yeah, she's good. she's good. Hell yeah. Yeah. This, this makes you hype for whatever the heck this game might be? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm like past the like actor gimmick, I guess, yeah. in mm. games, you know, but it's Kojima, so I know that's kind of comes with the territory now, I guess. Yeah. Um, he said he does. But that he like so watches common. a movie every night as like, a ritual, right? Yeah, but like even Callisto Protocol having like what's her face from the boys and mm. Josh Duhamel, and it's just like you know, I care about the game, not yeah. the yeah, actor, yeah, yeah, unless yeah. it's Norman Reedus, because yeah. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Norman Reedus and I love him. So yeah, if it's like one of my favorite actors, I'll be hyped. But mm -hmm. other than that, you know, any kind of like celebrity casting is just like, yeah. man, it's gonna be weird when this happens to a Final Fantasy game. Yeah, mm -hmm. just some speaking of, right there, I'm like, dude, what? I don't want that. I don't right. want that. Yeah, that'll take me out of it. Final Fantasy VII: The First Soldier, that mobile game, is ending service January 11th. I didn't want to play it on my phone. Yeah, it it's was, only on. It's only on mobile. It's released November of 2021. Yeah, so you just go slightly more than a year and. And, and here's the kicker, this quote. We haven't been able to deliver the experience that we were hoping to. Ooh. And that you all deserve. Whoa. Redemption arc coming. <laughs> Gonna re remake it or something. Or like put it into uh, no. like a Kingdom Hearts uh, <laughs> remind type thing. Make it a cutscene yeah, or, okay. or like, yeah. Okay. Could do that. Yeah, yeah. They certainly do a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That I wouldn't do. Yeah. I'm just like, okay. Just get that four condor standalone game, please. I, mean, please. I think just not putting this at least on PC probably Yeah, great call. Yeah. Hindered its growth substantially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I know the mobile a lot of mobile games is very doing big, that now, yeah. yes, but I think it would just help get a lot more people in. Like me. Yeah. I don't want to play on my but phone. It doesn't it doesn't sound like they're disappointed in this reception. It sounds like they're disappointed in themselves. <laughs> Like, we made a bad game, guys. We're yeah, killing I, mean, it. I love that transparency. I mean, it's just yeah. like, why I, a game that no one really cares about or ever cared about or ever wanted? Was it the Battle Royale one? Yes. Oh, I played one round of that. Oh, actually. yeah. Well, yeah. How was it? It was whatever. Yeah. It wasn't terrible. I was like, okay. And then I, yeah. Yeah, I played one but round. But, like, that was it. whatever's not good enough nowadays. Yeah. 
yeah. to keep you going. Yeah. yeah. Especially something like a battle royale. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it didn't even bother me that I was Final Fantasy VII. I was just like, yeah, yeah whatever, dude. I get it. I get it. Um, Heber, uh, last week we had talked about the, you know, the investor relations meeting with Cyberpunk and all the games that they are talking about and revealing this week. Don't nod. Yeah, I'm a little concerned here, Blood. Eight titles in the works. That is a lot <laughs> yeah, of we titles. we about this. Yeah. yeah. That is a lot of titles. Five self-published titles. It's concerning. One uh, is that they have in collaboration with Focus Interactive, and then two that they're they're just publishing from, yeah. from external studios. Yeah, you know, I, I love this studio, as you very well know, Bloodworth, going all the way back to uh, Remember Me. I love, mm-hmm. I love talking to you about Remember Me. <laughs> uh, and obviously Life is Strange, but they've been a little inconsistent. You know, I was lukewarm on Vampire. I know they patched it over... Like, Twin Mirror was not great. Yeah, Twin Mirror, yeah. and uh, Tell Me Why I thought was fine, but, you know... Tell, tell me, me why ain't nothing. <laughs> but like, tell me why and Twin Mirror were like kind of back to back, and it felt like it. They both kind of suffered from that. It felt like, you know, less. It just they they felt lower quality. Yeah. And I I remember in my mind I was like oh maybe because you know they just came off Life is Strange two they're doing both of these like it I felt that when I was playing those yeah so now even they've more they've also staffed up a lot they've got like some international studios true they re- yeah. rebranded like this is a new era that's a great point so yeah we'll we'll see where they go from here but I am a little little nervous yeah. 69% of all physical games sold in Japan last month were Splatoon 3. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it came out early September, right? Was uh, it early? Yeah, I think, yeah, either that or like very end of yeah. August. Yeah, so, well, yeah. Japan is Switchland already, yeah. and Splatoon is humongous there already. Yeah. So, but it's, crazy. yeah. It is crazy. It's, you said physical only? Uh, yeah, the, the yeah. Nintendo doesn't share digital sales until they do their uh, quarterly reports God, and stuff. Yeah. So many. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, this game wow. sold a lot, dude. Yeah. 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 Really, like, one of the fastest-selling games in Japan. Mm-hmm. Wow. Crazy. Splatoon. I hope that team does something different now. Hmm. Now they've done three Splatoon yeah, games. Yeah, trilogy. Anytime you do a trilogy, yeah. it's like, all right. I think you should try something different. Yeah. Um, Vela Games, a studio composed of vets from Riot, EA, Epic, and Blizzard, have announced Evercore Heroes, uh, in which four teams of four compete in PvE sessions... Uh, they have like a cinematic trailer, kind of showed off the characters and all of that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like I don't have anything. I guess there's play tests happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, but so far, it's you know, it just seems so vague that I don't yeah, sure. know. And like the cinematic trailer was not enough for me to really. Yeah. Just, you know, I just felt like another like kind of okay, yeah, Riot League of Legends type of Staff, character yeah. design. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, it's cool. I guess. Don't know anything about it. Uh, Sonic Frontiers is getting a free Monster Hunter DLC. <laughs> Monster Hunter DLC. I saw this. Uh, November 14th. What did you say about it, Brad? Uh, you were like, somehow it's like the coolest and the ugliest <laughs> thing. Abomination. Oh, yeah. I, like, <laughs> you were like, loved I, it and you hated I it. I approve and also hate it at the same time. <laughs> Just like Sonic. Yeah, so you get the armor set and you get a grilled meat set. Yeah. Which look, lets meat. you cook up tasty meat and play mini games to raise Sonic's sure. strength. Yes. Where's uh, Ignis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, latest reports indicate PS5 supp- supplies in September were four times higher yeah. than so uh, September 2021. I saw people taking showing it in like stores, actually. Yeah. Saw pictures of them in stores, too. Um, probably beefing up the God of War supply. Oh, my God. They just yes. revealed a God of War bundle. Yeah. So smart, PS5. very smart. Mm-hmm. It was in like two shows I watched. They were talking about it, and one of the bits was like, you know, how hard those things are to get. Someone was like blackmailing someone for a PS5. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what shows were that shit? Keep going. Um, all right, uh, and then uh, we got some catch up on a bunch of Activision news. Oh boy, my favorite. The two ongoing Activision stories just keep getting worse. Um, <laughs> First, they're facing another sexual harassment lawsuit from an unnamed woman who alleges her reports to HR weren't acted on until last August after the company's issues became an international headline. Oh, I see. Okay, so there's still so a lot of So she first reported in like then. 2017. Okay. And then 
So it's a lot of older. She stuff went back. Still. Interesting. Yeah, she went back and. Uh, August last year, and then they so finally got rid of the guy. It's not like a thing that just happened a month ago or something. At least I guess. Sure. They're, They're just trying got, to like rebrand. They have and, such like, a backlog of yes, uh, complaints. issues here. Yes. It's like people are waiting in line, waiting their turn. To, yeah. yeah. It's insane. So it's so in both the individual as well as Activision, the mm-hmm. company as well. Um, and then meanwhile, the fight over Call of Duty. Oh, um, right. Yes. Microsoft's proposed purchase of Activision. Uh, regulators in Brazil approved approve the deal, uh, yep. noting Nintendo does very well competing uh, in the market without having Call of Duty right That's now. That's true. Uh, and now. they also believe PlayStation has plenty on uh, on their side mm-hmm. so they can continue to compete just mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, in the UK, uh, they seem to be you know more, listening yeah. more to Sony's side of things. Uh, and Sony is arguing that even if Microsoft doesn't make it exclusive, it will still hurt them. Because they can put it on Game Pass, yeah. and they can do enhanced versions that people might want to switch over to the Xbox. Yes, which is so funny to me because that's what PlayStation is doing right now: mm-hmm. is locking down uh, all these extra goodies for Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like we don't want them to get that. That would oh, be unfair. No, of course not. <laughs> like, um, I understand this from both perspectives. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sony does not want to. They want to get as much out of Call of Duty as they possibly can. And I don't blame them for doing that. However, it's like, come on. Come on. <laughs> right. It's like, we know. Come on. It's all right, Jim. We know. But like, if I was Jim Ryan and my job right. is to please shareholders, I would absolutely yeah. be doing the same thing as him. Call of Duty, absolutely. yeah, it's one of the top And dogs. you know, like, there's that stuff with Microsoft saying, like, oh, well, it, we can never catch up to Sony and Nintendo, essentially saying that. It's like, come on, dude. <laughs> come on, Phil. <laughs> Get together. Yeah. So, two business people arguing about it. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, finally, <laughs> this one is just too funny to me to leave out. Is this ARC? Did you have that on here? No. Because that, that kind of... What was the ARC? I was kind of thinking... Oh, how much they paid for it. Oh, paid people were talking about how much they paid. Game Pass they and were, yeah, they're, PS Plus and all that. Sony and Microsoft just give them... Arc all kinds of Big money, cash. just millions, multiple millions, million, like yeah. two or three million dollars. For Isn't that. it like I want to know like how much, like let's say how much like Microsoft's paying, yeah, to get Lies of P on Game Pass. <laughs> yeah, how much did you give them? I want to know. That. Yeah, I love seeing those numbers. So yeah. that just kind of yeah, made that me is fascinating because we don't get those peaks enough. I know, you know? <laughs> and you're always like, I want to know the budget. Yeah, I want to know this. Uh, but the funny one for me. Square Enix Montreal, who was recently sold to the Embracer Group, mm-hmm. so they couldn't be called Square Enix Montreal anymore, right. has unveiled their new name, Onoma, which is Greek for name. Okay. They needed a name, name. so they named themselves Name. <laughs> name. This is so That just sounds like <laughs> the two head people of this company were... Smoking a joint together, and we're just <laughs> but like, they have a whole like just they're they're names. explaining names. it. Yeah, they Whoa. have all the bullet points of the reasons and the design. You know, the normal marketing deck. I stuff. mean, uh, ch- sure, whatever. Blood. Yeah. Will we see a new Deus Ex this decade? Oh, decade? Yeah, I think so. Okay, but I think they, I think they're going Legacy of Kane first. Do you Sick. Ever, you have Ooh. a better chance, much better chance of getting Deus Ex before F Zero. Way better chance. <laughs> okay. All right. There's Legacy of King Crystal Dynamics. That should be Crystal uh, I Dynamics. I think it was. Crystal, yeah. 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 So I think that's where Crystal's going. Yeah. yeah. But aren't they doing Tomb Raider? Someone's doing Tomb Raider. Um, yeah. Crystal yeah. Dynamics, formerly published by IDOS. Yeah. So it's all and intertwined. It's Dynamics. all intertwined. Yeah, yeah. So it's all. All right. It's all the same. It's, same. <laughs> it's time for love and respect. Love and respect. From Jerry Young. Uh, Hi, allies. I was curious if there were any big what-ifs you think about in the world of gaming. I recently went down the rabbit hole of learning about Nintendo and Sony's hybrid console. Oh, yeah. You know, the Super Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, And it got me thinking about what gaming would look like if that were a success. (laughs) Great question. What if Mm -hmm. the Dreamcast had succeeded? Right. Well, the one I was thinking was was similar because remember the Dreamcast was running like Windows CE for its operating system, mm, I didn't know that. you know, and so it's like, what if like Sega and Microsoft had teamed up to make the Xbox, you know? Yeah. It was like some weird co-branded thing at that time. Shit. 
Hmm. What if the N64 used CDs originally right out the gate? Oh, yeah. They probably would have had Final Fantasy still. Probably. Yeah. Probably. What if (laughs) Switch had trophies? Whoa! Now we're talking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't think anyone would notice too much. <laughs> I'd notice. We wouldn't have that show. Is that, that's what the what if would be. We, we lost out on that. <laughs> yeah, what if the Wii U was a smashing success? Yeah, well, yeah what if the Wii U actually had load times yeah. that were acceptable? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Seriously, I think, of, I think of like just Sega and the Dreamcast and everything and... Yeah, them going you know, third party. Yeah, they mm-hmm. were they were a pillar of this they industry sure were, for yeah. quite a while, and then not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, you know, like that, what if what, Atari you know? still made consoles? Like, whoa, yeah. Like if like if Sega had a console, it just nowadays, was, nowadays, just modern. Yeah, yeah, it'd be so weird. Yeah, but awesome. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, I love my Sega. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. a four way fight there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. Just or like, would Microsoft have even entered the fray? Yeah, that's a great question. It's like, yeah, it's weird. That is weird, yeah. <laughs> From Reptile Scorpio, howdy, allies. We're howdy. getting deep into October now. Yes. So I was wondering what cozy horror games mm-hmm. you would each recommend for this month that may not get as much attention as the usual Resident Evil Supermassive releases. Uh, I'm personally keen to give the Alan Wake remaster a chance mm. in the hopes Halloween vibes will help Great. me to overlook some of the rough edges. Rough edges? <laughs> rough edges? Rough edges? What are you talking about, rough edges? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a reptile scorpion. I don't know. <laughs> I got one right off the bat. Yeah. I've been playing this a little bit recently. Super cheap, too. Mm. Nightmare of Decay on PC. Yeah, baby. Oh, it's like Five first bucks. person, like Resident Evil style. Shit mm. is sick. It's cool. Great pick, Brad. Yeah, it's fun. Phenomenal pick. Don't skip easy it. Easy to recommend for the price. Yep. So easy. So perfect. If you have a PC. Nice. So, so perfect. perfect. Isla, you got one? What are we doing? Cozy horror games? Horror games. Yeah. I mean, cozy, but I mean, what? It, it's just not the, the big the big names that everyone's always talking about, Resident Evil and the super massive games and all that. Don't sleep on the, oh, what's it called? It's coming out end of the month. Signalis. Yeah. That one looks cool. Uh, phew. Pew, pew. Outer Wilds got some spooky <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. going to say, because I have my queue, but I just have not been able to get to it. I got a couple big horror mm-hmm. games on my radar. Uh, Phobia, Saint Something yeah. Hotel. Saint looks, Dinsna, or Diffna or something like that. It looks so sick, but I haven't played it, so I can't confirm. So I'm just going to go to my old standby. Saint Diffna Hotel. Yeah. Nice. Phobia oh. spelled with an F, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Looks sick. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my old standby, and that'll be Fort Nightmares coming up. Oh, that's very cozy. in like five days. Nice. Truly, for the last many years, has been one of my absolute favorite games to play over the Halloween season. It is just maximum cozy vibes. Even if you don't play Fortnite, like unless you despise Fortnite and you know, like if you don't know, like maybe hop in for this event. Just check it out because they, you know, completely transform the map. Halloween theming everywhere. They'll have different events. Like they have a horde mode sometimes, and it's just a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Also, like I mean, we just streamed the Spectral Mall. One. My hair is just the demo, yeah. But uh, the the haunted PS One demo discs. If you like that old school vibe, check out the haunted PS One demo discs. Stuff like Mothered. Also, that company that makes uh, that made Murder House. Remember that one, Hubie? Murder House. That was a fun one. <laughs> uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, medieval. Oh, yeah. Super yeah. charming, spooky style. And Pumpkin Jack, it's another one. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go back. I've been recommending this for the past year or so, but In Sound Mind. Oh, very nice. Have been blood. Yeah, it does look so good. Psychological horror game. Yeah. Uh, I think it just came out on Switch, too. Sick. Um, if you don't have the, have it on PC oh. or the other consoles. Play Little Nightmares also. Little mm-hmm. Nightmares. You haven't played those. I think the dark pictures are really, really cozy. They are. You know? yeah. that's, that's, well, well, that's what we're saying. Not, not that, because we already recommend that all the time. Oh. <laughs> I miss that part. Here's, here's, how about 
<laughs> kind of a different take. Uh, the the remaster of Grim Fandango that came out a few years ago. Oh, sure. Oh. Play yeah, with a guide, maybe? But, uh, yeah, that's kind of cozy. He's a skeleton. I don't see how that it's spooky in any way. But, he's yeah. a skeleton, man, and you're <laughs> in the world of the dead blood. <laughs> that's a cozy game. I, I, I'm saying more on the cozy end. Sure, less sure. On the yeah, 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 yeah. Depends on what you're going for. Yeah, yeah like medieval's more cozy. Yeah. Yeah. And Sound Mind is one of those games where it's like, you know, mess with your head. The night. Turn around, oh, turn back, something ridiculous. there that wasn't there before. Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Shut a little that's hard to play that now, though. cozy. Yeah. You played on a Wii. Mm hmm. Yeah, they did. Did they release that on PS2. something else? Eventually? Yeah, it was yeah. out on other stuff. But, like, PS2. without the Wii won't, man. Yeah. Doesn't hit the same. Answer those calls. Answer those calls. That's your daughter. Mm -hmm. Calling Answer you. Answer those calls. Ring, ring. Where is she? Where? Where is she? Uh, from Brian from Happy Gaming. Uh, with October in full swing, I've continued my annual tradition of trying to play as many spooky games throughout nice. the month as I can. I wish. Uh, I've run into a bit of a problem, though. Oh. Certain types of spooks have just never clicked for me. Okay, let's hear it. At the moment, I'm midway through Amnesia Rebirth. Yeah. The first game... I definitely remember uh, fondly playing with friends. Dark Descent, 10 out of 10. All of us getting spooked out of our minds. Fuck yes. But as time <laughs> has gone on, the trend of being dropped into a maze sure. with an invincible predator chasing you has grated on me. Hmm. It can feel like a burdened, tacked on chore to run away from the invincible foe rather than being scary uh, that draws you further in and heightens the immersion. Um, RE8, uh, Bienavento felt kind of like that to me, where I was like, okay. You were a little over? Well, I was just like, I mean, I loved it. It was cool, but I was like, okay, you took my guns away, so I understand what this entire section is. It's like just running. Gotcha. With, Not scary. With horror more than anything, Bloodworth, I mean, with everything, with a lot of games I do, but with horror yeah. especially, got RP. You got mm. our, once you start critically thinking about it, like, oh, this shit's this and this is that, like, yeah. then I, then it's like, okay, you're not going to be scared. Like, you right. know, once you're critically analyzing it as you're going through, for me. So yeah. I just got to, I got to really Or even get, sort of just like a combat thing. It's like, oh, yeah, just, you know. Yeah. You just start becoming like very mechanical about how very you start shooting Very mechanical. Resident Evil yeah. 4, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. specifically, Here's I think about that. Yes. More tips. Playing at night. Yes. With your lights off. Okay. Play with headphones on by yourself. They tell you yeah. to when you boot up. No one else around you. They make you. They're no like, one put them on. Sitting next to you on their phone, telling about some Twitter nonsense. <laughs> you got to be in there by yourself. Yeah, that'll help a lot. RP is key. I also recommend having like a tragic life. <laughs> yes, that, that these games can prey upon. Definitely your, helps your own fears and insecurities. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I also I also think it, it helps to have. Just any other living being in the house that's not paying attention. Oh, God. Because you get those moments where you're freaked out, and then someone comes and taps on your shoulder. You're like, oh, gosh. Mm. Terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. A cat rubs up against your leg yeah. or something. Yeah. If you can organize having an unliving being in your house, too, <laughs> that would be even scarier, probably. Yeah. So the question was? Or the, uh, the statement if you just was, had any other horror elements that turn you off, turn me. If there's anything in a yeah. horror game that, like, you know what, this is trying to be scary, mm -hmm. but it just it just feels annoying. Yeah, I guess when it's just like trends continuously, where you're like used to, like, <laughs> I I'm Res like I don't know how many more times Resident Evil is gonna do this in their games. Or it's pursuer, just like, pursuer enemy. Yeah. Like, pursuer enemies are a little old to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's time to put to put a put a stop you gotta, on like, the like, cool breaks on it. Yeah. 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 Well, because like, they did two, three in Village. Like, yeah. all at least time. Village it wasn't it. like the whole game. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's just but, that part. But yeah. yes, three in a row. They all had pursuers. Three in a row. Uh, probably. Two is even Resident Evil Six had though. the friggin' Ustanok pursuer. Well, it was like, terrifying in two also because it had been a long time and we haven't seen one like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. In a long time different. in a Resident Evil game. Yeah. Like Mr. X in, in RE Remake, RE2 Remake, feels like different because it's, it's more like the alien in isolation where it's like, it's just following you and doing yeah. stuff and can go kind of anywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. Most pursuers are like, okay, I'm in this safe room now. Yeah. Oh, that's we weird. played Dino Crisis the other day, and it's like a whole game of pursuer enemies, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, every, you can kill them, but yeah. they're all pursuers. They can follow you. But, like, that even happens in RE2 Remake. You just hit the save room, yeah. and you hear Mr. Yeah, X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside but, of it. Yeah. But it was still more effective because we hadn't seen it in a long time in, like, a newer game. I also think the thing with, with that is, like, even though you were safe, 
like there was a sense of like when is it actually mm-hmm. safe yes. to leave the, the room. footsteps helped yeah. a lot his big footsteps yeah. and the design of like the rpd and having to mm-hmm. like do stuff in it while he's chasing you yeah versus like you can't have just like run memorize away. that whole yeah. layout yeah. yeah get to get to yeah. this place like no you gotta like go here and do this and that and this and that it's, mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's good good shit but any anything else that stands out as being like more annoyance no i can't just really think of anything no. games that aren't good yeah <laughs> that's true that's pretty annoying when they like repeat things over and over and it becomes less scary or just like nonstop jump scares or like nonstop like creatures crawling in the dark mm-hmm. gets written. Yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah. I think I think you're hitting on something because I think like some yeah. of the like some of the lower end um jump scare games. Yeah. Like they just they just like attack you with volume sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just like too much. Sure. Both like the um, the amount of times that they jump scare you and the actual yeah. Noise level. Yeah. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Yeah. Yep. It's time for bets. <laughs> this week's bets. Gotham Knights is out next week, allowing you to play as Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing, Red Hood. Batman's dead. 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 We're going to be playing Allegedly. on PS5. They promised they wouldn't come back. <laughs> uh, we're going to play on PS5. And from the start screen, we're going to see how long it takes before we, in control, can attack the first enemy. Brad. Three minutes. Three minutes. Huber. Three minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, 3.30. Isla. Uh, One minute, four seconds, Daniel. One minute and four seconds. And... I've got the high there. 418. Nice, the low and the high. Shit. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not good. <laughs> Last week's bet. Uh, the Case of the Golden Idol. Oh, yeah. Launched this week. Uh, it's a detective game in which you essentially find words, collect them in an inventory, and then use them to fill in the blanks, complete sentences, and solve the mysteries. I looked through the game's launch trailer to see how many collectible words would be about an item of food or drink. Because in previous trailers, you had all kinds of stuff. You had yeah. lemonade, you had wine, you yeah. had roast, you had salad. The launch trailer? Nope. None of it. They had so many like punch-ins to where you couldn't see the inventory at all. Oh. It was very focused on the art style. <laughs> oh. So there were... Zero? Zero. Wow. I didn't go over the bets first, but oh well. Uh, Brad bet five. Damn it. Damiani bet two. Isla bet six. I bet eight. I feel like I want to look at the trailer. (laughs) Because did you you haven't played this. You maybe don't know what they look like. I know what the words in the boxes look like. No, but the words (laughs) show up in the game, too, highlighted. Right. But you you, you didn't even have that. Oh, okay. I haven't seen the trailer. (laughs) Blood has spoken. Blood hath spoken. Blood has spoken. Yeah. So Damiani was the low with two. Um, so Huber is mm-hmm. in Damiani's seat, bringing the scores to Massive Chubbs, 20, Splish, <laughs> Meloder Sea Lions, 19. Oh. 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 <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Meloder Sea Lions, a l- little tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, m- the sea lion in my my brain when I did that was like radiating stink. Mm. Okay. It had like the com the cartoon like stink lines. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Uh, let me tell you about <laughs> patreon.com slash easy allies. Uh, we are funded uh, by you, by our listeners, by our viewers. Uh, we cannot do this work without your help. We are independent. Uh, we are not run by some crazy marketing machine or anything like that. Uh, a crazy marketing machine would help to have our stuff out there to other places, but uh, <laughs> but yes, we truly we truly do need your help for everything that we do. Uh, get in there on Patreon and uh, help us get back moving forward, moving ahead to do all the fun things that we do further into the future. 
uh, for the foreseeable future. And if you if you just for whatever reason hate Patreon, we do have a one time uh, link down there in the description below. Uh, but Patreon is the main thing uh, that really helps us keep a gauge on everything that's going on. Uh, it's the most effective way to support us. Uh, and you get fun rewards. Uh, at the $1 level, uh, you get access to this podcast ad-free. Um, and uh, you get two bonus love and respect questions. Had a fun one there with the teacher just a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, really really fun. Uh, not really even question, but just fun to see see what people are doing sometimes. Um, and then at the $5 tier, you get early access to the show and quite a few other shows. You get to submit to Love and Respect. And you get access to our Discord, uh, where people are talking about the news uh, throughout the week as well. Uh, and uh, music, actually, one of the things that uh, I, I do sometimes is because people will, will send me like albums and things of like remix albums or official soundtracks. And like, I don't have like a way to really talk about this mm-hmm. right now to go like to cover it, cover it. Uh, but you know, I'll, I'll throw those things into Discord and, and share them and, and let people listen. Um, and then at our high level tiers, uh, the people uh, who give us a lot, who are generous, uh, we give them shout outs at the $250 tier and above. And this month's shout outs go to Jabble Apps, El Thanis, Greg, the Dark Knight Kettering, and Anacroft. Shout, shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Heber. Yo. Since you're in that seat. You get to promote any Easy Allies video you would like to promote that is actually up. Uh, you get the final word on anything you've disagreed with, want to reiterate, or popped in your head. And you get to sign off with your trademark sign off. We're all laughing at things that have been cut out of this episode. It is. It's true. Uh, video. Video. Uh, Dio Field Chronicle Review. Oh, shit. Check that, that was mine. out. That is a Brad Ellis joint right there. You can check it out on Easy Allies. Uh, yeah, review. Always, always nice to see uh, some reviews for lesser reviewed games. So I appreciate that. Brad, doing it. Uh, and then... Final word. Final word. Sign off. Final word and sign off. Uh, Starfield could be cool. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>